Hello, and thank you for joining us for, for the 112th and final regularly scheduled episode of That Show with Billy Wilson. The show brings together artists, musicians, photographers, personalities, and all sorts of fun, interesting people from around the world on Fridays for a Hangout. This episode, we're joined by uh, a number of people, including our special musical guest, Denny Cochier, who will be playing a few songs for us for the last 16 minutes of the hour. And we also have photographer Lotus Carroll joining us as well. And we also have photographer Rachel Alexandra, who uh, might be having a few technical difficulties, but hopefully will be joining us at some point. And we also have astronomer and researcher uh, Scott Lewis joining us as well. And we also have our, our, our uh, very local host, Mr. Tibby, who's been trying to destroy things this entire time. If I can lure him over. There we go. Here we go, Tibby. Tibby. There he is. Oh, yeah. Mr. Tibby. There he is. And here's the Tibby Shoulder Press. Yes. <laughs> nice. So, Billy, what are Tibby's favorite books to eat? Um, he likes this one book called uh, Look at America, and it's a very old book. It refers to the American Civil War as not being that long ago. <laughs> and apparently it tastes very good. Well, and as we can see here in America right now, things are pretty divided. So go, Tibby. You get, you have some good taste. You're up on current events. So and go for that. He's also uh, trying to go after a book called Over Hong Kong, which is a picture book of uh, high-rise developments in Hong Kong. And there's also oh a German a G uh, Germany pic uh, picture book for Western Germany during the Cold War that he's also trying to destroy. Have you ever thought of letting Tibby taste some fiction? Um, I don't really do a lot of fiction. I, I, I'm thinking I'm more philosophy. He's like, also going would, after the biology textbook. Yeah, what would Tibby do if he found Nietzsche? And I mean, besides be like destroy everything, um, what what would happen? I'm interested. <laughs> Tibby he open it like, up and read it. Consumes all the humanities, and we're doomed. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, Rachel, Rachel made it in. Yay. Yay. I had no idea what was going on. It was just, the little quotation was just like wiggling in the screen, and I'm like, I was just in here. Like, restarting actually made it worse. So I restarted again, it seemed to fix it this time. Because I peer pressured your boyfriend into joining my show the other week, <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap, I didn't realize I'd be on air with you. So, awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. I was like, I, was like, I know that guy. I'm like, you know that guy. So it's nice to meet you formally. I'm nice to meet you as well, <laughs> Rachel. I just yeah, I told him the other night. I was just like, I was like, go do it. Go hang out. Go do your hangout stuff. So that's what I'm doing tonight. He's like, go do your hangout stuff. I'm that's like, right. Okay, good to go. Yeah. And then uh, make sure to guilt him into doing more of my shows with me since it's been a while since I've seen him. I'm like, come on, absolutely, Mike, you absolutely. That's like, that'll, I'll put that on my list. Guilt Mike into the yes. morning. Peer pressure always works. <laughs> so, so how is everyone doing tonight? And Billy, congratulations on your last scheduled show. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, um, I, I, I'm making this last scheduled show because, uh, I mean, I do find a lot of value in doing the show. I, I know that a lot of people uh, appreciate uh, that I organize this and they enjoy getting together and meeting each other and, 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 inter and interacting. Uh, but... Uh, I, over time, uh, my interests happen to change a lot, and uh, currently I'm focusing more on analyzing and collecting population data, uh, and 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 lo and uh, studying architecture. And I've been po uh, posting articles over my blog about that. I've also been writing about mental health and uh, experiences on a dating site in relation to mental health, and uh, these are kind of the projects that have been taking up my time lately and although I reduced uh, doing my show from every week to once a month I found that I wasn't really I, I just don't have a urge to invite people to the show I mean like I it, it was just like I've been like it happily and, and intensely working on uh, my other articles and my other projects and I've been happy with doing that so I I just feel like uh, you know at least allowing myself to get rid of the schedule for now and just work on what projects I like would be best for me so that uh, but I, I don't want to completely formally discontinue the show because I know that at some point further down the road I'll likely want to do an episode again or maybe start doing weekly shows again for whatever reason it's just that for right now uh, it's giving me a lot of stress and uh, um, 
and a lot of the guests that I've been getting for the previous few shows uh, have been actually uh, gathered by other people, uh, like namely Jordan Oram, who actually got hey, everyone. Trust this. Me, it is so good to have a producer to wrangle that stuff for you. I have I've gone that route because I my my other show, the Virtual Star Party, has been going on about as long as yours has, and. It's so nice having somebody else wrangle those people for you so you can actually focus on what, what you need to do. So don't have any shame in Jordan, who was supposed to be here tonight and isn't because I consumed his soul, grew this magnificent beard. Um, <laughs> a, a, or he's having internet issues. But I like to say that I, I uh, Jordan and I have become one since we've been working together. And it's a, a funny story because Jordan and I met as a guest on this show, gosh, two years ago? It's yeah, I've, I've been doing it's the been show a... for two and a half years. I've actually yeah. featured over 400 people, and this is the 112th episode. That's wow. awesome. That's, that's so That's so great. Yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking, like, I have a list of about 200 and some people who have been on the show over on my blog, and I'm, I, I want to uh, expand it so that it includes all the people who have been on uh, the regularly scheduled show. Uh, just like as, you know, a collection of, you know, uh, everyone just, uh, you know, like I like, I am obsessive and, and, and wanting to just like paint a complete picture of what the entire show has done. And uh, I, I'm very happy that uh, it has helped me grow as a person and it, it, it's helped other people connect with each other. And uh, one of the main reasons why I started the show was because uh, I, 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 I've naturally always experienced uh, social difficulties, and uh, it was a great challenge for me to do this. Uh, I mean, like, some people would encourage me to actually go out in the physical world, but, I mean, even doing this project, like, it, it, it still helps. And also, you know, it also further developed my organizational skills, which were already good to begin with, but... Um, a lot of skills I, I've developed from it, and I've also uh, brought together a lot of different kinds of people, a lot of different communities. So I've brought together musicians, photographers, artists, uh, YouTube people, all, and uh, science people, and all kinds of people. I've had special editions of all kinds. I've had cooks, chefs, uh, uh, all kinds, really. So you're connecting the entire world together. I've yeah. Been, like you said, you should be proud. I mean, that. so Jordan, you know, I guess... Jordan and I have recently started working together on, on developing some some projects together creatively, and it honestly literally would not have happened if it was not for you and inviting me as a guest on the show where I met him, and we've been able to cultivate this relationship over time. So that's that's literally as a result of you, Billy, has allowed this to happen, and we're, we're excited about some new, fun, silly things once I give up his soul, which might be for some time. But. Yeah, and and that's one of the greatest things to see uh, and hear is that people have uh, found each other and uh, you know worked together and enjoyed uh, meeting each other from being on my show. Uh, also, you know when I've had personalities on the show and I knew that some people were fans of them, I would also always try to like uh, like I I just like people you know being able to connect with each other and uh, you know just facilitating a connection and I I feel that my main role in the show. Um, has been like not a traditional role in, in that you know like uh, I love different like kinds of shows on TV and uh, online like the host is has like a dominant role like I've been like I've considered myself largely a uh, framework for the show like I bring the people together and the people themselves are really a show like that that's kind of how I've structured it and felt about it for the most part and you've been doing a great job at it no, you totally, you totally rocked it. I have to give you a hand, man. That's a lot of work. He puts a lot of work into these shows, so. Yeah, yeah and hopefully you can de-stress and focus on some things that you want to focus on, and then when you decide to put another show together, eventually it'll be, be something that you're excited to come back to instead of yeah. feeling like something else you have to do regularly. Yeah, and that's the way I want uh, to go, especially with my uh, mental issues and stuff. Like, I'm trying to make certain that I'm doing work that I feel productive with and that I enjoy, and I actually want to actually live <laughs> while doing. Uh, yeah, oh, and I think, you know, I, I know this is something that's been hot on, on your mind for a while, and then also just with recent events going on with Robin Williams, and, you know, mental health is a very real thing. It is uh, something that it's, 
very easily ignored in our culture to pretend that it doesn't exist where it really consumes a lot of us. Um, I I haven't been all that public about mine. Um, I've actually in the been in the middle of writing something about that when everything else has been going on, but I've been struggling with depression for a long time, and it's not easy. It's not just like, oh, cheer up, buddy. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, except for my brain goes, screw you, you do nothing right, and that's so hard to overcome. Yeah. Um, and it, it's very real, and just trying to push through it doesn't always work, and, and mm-hmm. finding out that you have a, you know, building a support structure around yourself to help you through those times is essential because your brain lo- loves to lie to you, or I, I like to use a lot of depression lies, and it will convince you of the worst things in the world that are not actually true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I think, you know, I also find myself, you know, especially with culture and especially with, uh, you know, I kind of, like, especially when I was younger, I wanted to be normal. So uh, especially, you know, when I was in uh, high school age and in high school, I would try to cover up my issues and try to pretend that they weren't there. But really all I was doing was putting them under the carpet. And then, you know, by the time I graduated from university with my degree, I was like, you know, I I still have issues, you know, covering them up uh uh, I mean, you know, it's just like I'll just suffer in silence and put a smile on my face. Uh, um, and, and the thing is, I have a number of issues, and I've been re- uh, re- re-diagnosed uh, lately, like uh, because I, I was originally diagnosed between six to eight years of age, and you know, I want to be diagnosed again, uh, you know, re- reassessed as an adult, and I I, I was. Uh, Recessed a few months ago, and interestingly, like traditionally, ADHD was uh, considered you know my main issue, but uh, today it's actually uh, OCD that's considered my main issue right now. That uh, I'm extremely obsessive compulsive, uh, and that's uh, what uh, I've I've been working with. I also have extreme anxiety, like insane anxiety, um, and uh, th- that's one of the reasons also why I I, I kind of want to uh, uh, take a break from the show and like just do episodes when I want because, you know, having a rigid schedule, especially back when it was weekly, and then you have, you know, the issue of not being able to focus on it, and then you also have, you know, I also have traditionally suffered from depression, so when you can't focus on something, and then you have anxiety because you can't focus on it, then you feel bad about yourself because you aren't focusing on it, and you aren't being productive, and then it it just rolls into a ball of, oh my gosh. Right. (laughs) It's a cycle. Yeah, I, I mean, like, it's just so many factors, and they're all compounding on top of each other, and, and it, it, it feels completely dreadful. Um, so you, to, You're singing my song, man. I, I totally know what you mean. It's it's very true. Yeah, and it's very anxiety intense. Anxiety is, is even worse because it starts feeding your depression, and it's it's yeah. terrible. Especially, you know, with the ADHD, it means that I don't function quite normally. And I have, like, the OCD, like, it's like, with the ADHD and the OCD, it's like, when I focus on something, it's like I'm so happy and intensely focused on it, but then I end up not doing, like, things like feeding myself or something, and then I get more anxiety, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I can't even take care of myself, and then I'm like, oh my goodness, now I'm not doing that project. But, I, I yeah, you know, it, it's a little bit difficult to to uh, uh, deal with, but... Uh, but you've been dealing with it, yeah. and that's, that's and, a and huge I'm thing. Uh, and, and, and Patreon has been uh, the best thing I've ever come across because uh, people have been very grateful in uh, supporting me on Patreon, and uh, I, I've actually... The most money I've ever made in my life has been through Patreon, actually. <laughs> um, and I'm extremely grateful for the support. Uh, like when, early when I first got on the internet and I, I started doing photography, I, I tried doing like a a sale a selling model of trying to sell my work, but it never like I think it's hard to stand out, and I also don't feel comfortable in selling things naturally. But as soon as I I started just saying, okay, everything's for free. I don't copyright anything. I don't give a crap. It's all Creative Commons. Just go use it, even if you steal it and say it's yours. I'm not even going to go after you, although I'd like you to at least credit me. Um, as soon as I started doing that, uh, and I said, you know, if you want to donate, you can donate, or if you can, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do that. I, I've never, uh, not to say like I'm making a lot of money, but I mean, you know, I, I'm just like any money is like. I, 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 I'm just so grateful because it, it's it's not just uh, uh, the fact that I need money to live. It's also the fact that people actually believe in me enough to actually give me money. 
and they, it, it, it's like they believe in me, uh, and, and that means a lot. It really does, like uh, especially on the days that I'm feeling really down. The fact that I know that people do believe in me enough to actually support me that way uh, really does help me a lot. So for those of you that are not patrons of Billy, head on over to patreon.com slash billywilson and consider supporting him in any way that you can, whether it be a dollar, whether it be ten dollars, because it's... It's something that I know a lot of, of, of artists are really doing, and it's uh, showing that. And as we can see here, it's, it's not just the finances that, that it does help out with, but it, it gives that, uh, that drive to continue going on because you are getting that feedback all the time of all those things and that, that engagement. So I'm screen sharing it, but it's really easy. Patreon.com slash Billy Wilson. And, you know, consider it. Consider supporting Billy because Billy's awesome sauce. Yeah, and it really does help. And this is, you know, what I actually make uh, all my money from. Like uh, right now, I, I am on disability support, and uh, and and this is what you know. And really, without Patreon, I don't know what my family would be doing because we, we aren't really doing very well financially. And it's because of the money that I've gotten through Patreon that we're able to pay off some bills that I don't know what where we'd be right now if it wasn't for that. And I'm very grateful. For, uh, and I'm trying to make sure that Tibby doesn't go insane here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I am extremely grateful for that. Um, I'd and, like to so, see Tibby go on a rant, actually. Yeah, come on, Tibby. Get behind the lectern and start yelling at us. <laughs> right now, he's like he has his back to me. He's like, I'm gonna sit here and contemplate whether or not I actually want to go near you or stand here and start clawing things that you have to come over to me. <laughs> <laughs> Put the camera on. I want to see him eat a book, a whole book. <laughs> I would move the camera, but the, with, with the camera, like the wire is loose on the back, and if I move it too much, it well, he's right up here now. You can see his tail. I, I think my favorite was when I asked you to do a bathroom selfie with Tibby, and you actually did a video in the bathroom yeah. with Tibby, and then you had to end it abruptly because he got really pissed all of a oh, sudden. That, actually, the, screen, the thumbnail for that video... Went viral actually, which is funny. I know. <laughs> I know. With me, I saw like that. It, it got it, like onto a pile of Tumblr blogs and stuff, and it's oh, now like really? part of like uh, like some sort of like uh, article about like the world's worst uh, photos of men and cats. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I liked the video a lot. It was funny. I yeah. want to see that picture now. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> it's actually on my like for a little while. I tried doing uh, a secondary vlog channel, uh, but then I realized it was just too much for me to do uh, two YouTube channels, and it was just best for me to keep it with one. I'm just trying to find uh, the link. I don't know how the heck to get to it easily and quickly. Um, whenever I type in my name, like there's like another popular Billy Wilson who's like a like a pasture or something. Yeah, I see his pictures. He's all in a suit, looking dapper. Yeah, um, I I don't know how to find it, the other channel, uh, and I and I don't want to like sign into the other account because I'm afraid that I'll fall out of this hangout and then it'll be like, oh crap. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. But yeah, it, it's on a, a different. Uh... I found the picture, Billy. Oh, did you just like look for it online? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, it ought to be pretty easy to find it that way. Yeah. How did you find it? You should probably just search for it online. I was going to find the video itself. There. Yeah, that, that, that's the article. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. That's, that's the picture. Fantastic. That's not the video, though. It's funnier if you actually see it. Yeah, no, Lotus is right. It was totally such a cute video. I thought it was great. It was really cute. And then it's it, part of what the charm of it is funny is because he really... Like, he does have to, like, abruptly stop it. You could just see, like, Tibby gets really pissed all of a sudden. <laughs> it's just like, he's like, oh, and ends it. <laughs> you mean, no, we are done. That is a wrap <laughs> now. So how viral did it go? I just thought it was go? really sweet, too, that I had just said, hey, you should do a Bethany Selfie with Tibby, and he went there and did that. I thought That's that fantastic. was fantastic. How viral did it go, Billy? Like, I, I, I don't know how to gauge it, but the thing is, is that... Uh, I had a lot of people saying, hey, look, I found you on this. And I'm like, well, you know, if everyone is independently finding it, it must be pretty popular. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. 
He looks really mad in that picture, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because I think in that exact scene, it's because he heard something behind him. And I can't remember what happens in the rest of the video, but I think for that scene, it's because he heard something. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what the heck was that? Hey, guys, look. Who am I? <laughs> Tibby? I'm Tibby, yeah. Tibby. Are you a musician now, Tibby? I think he was worried that you were going to ruin his reputation with the bathroom selfie. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, at least you didn't take it with an iPad. That would have been worse. <laughs> that would have been awesome. <laughs> it's a camera, which is nice. <laughs> right. You know, you're going legit, but I can see you holding Tibby with an iPad trying to get this picture going on. <laughs> oh, man, when you see people taking... like, Photoshop iPad, some abs on Tibby. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get Tippy to like sit on your head um, and take a picture? Is that possible? Is, uh, is that possible? Like have him curled, curled when right I'm up. When I'm down on my bed, Tippy sometimes goes on the pillow up top, and then he, he's like, "Oh, this isn't a good place to sit," and then he just hops off. Okay, I'm gonna put Tucker on my head right now, and he's probably four, right. to- four times the size of Tippy. Do it. Hey, hey Tuck, can you go on my head? <laughs> Come on. He's so cute. I love your dog. Like, what? He's like, yeah, no, not happening, dude. I heard you guys talking. I heard it was coming. I had already decided no. I'm not going on your head. Forget it. I tried to pick him up the other day, and he's like 70 pounds. And I'm all like, look, I can pick up my dog. <laughs> he's just, and he's just like, and he just does the, the dog squirm. You can't hold on to them. They're like a, like a wet pig or something. He's almost as big as Tibby. How big is Tibby? Um, uh, last time I weighed him, he's 21 pounds. He's uh, a big cat. I haven't weighed him for a while. Uh, I think he might have lost weight. I don't know why. He Well, well uh, he vomits a lot. Um, I don't know why. Um, that's hair balls. Really... Well, hair balls is a big one, yeah. Well, and, bad, and bad research in those books. He's like, oh, I reject this hypothesis. <laughs> 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 Uh, right now he's pretty calm. He's stretched out on the floor and he's grabbing one of my slippers. Yeah, uh, that cat that big, I'd be worried that he might like. Like if he's gonna go out hunt, does he ever go outside? Like he could bring back a dog. Uh, no, I I've never had him outside. Um, when I adopted him, he was a stray, and I believe that likely he used to be an outdoor cat, but he's never been outside since uh, I've had him. You know, at the very least, because you're in Sault Ste. Marie, he could he could. Easily bring back some youpers, you know, just bring them across the lake. They're, you know, they, I mean, they're wiry and they got some fight to them. I think Tibby could totally go to the Upper Peninsula and bring back some youpers. Or an elk. Yeah. Yeah. A gaggle of youpers. <laughs> is that like a snipe? Something like that. No, youpers are. So I'm from Michigan originally. So youpers are people from the Upper Peninsula, UP, and. They have their, they have like their entire like culture thing that we, that they are very proud of. They are a youper. They are not a Michigander, and oh. it's, it's yes, it's, so it's, it's like awesome. People. People it's like the it's like a red green show, but every day, just that's that's youpers. Were well, you talking about Canada, really? Yeah, most well, of the time, all yeah. of Canada. Yeah. yeah, except for Southern Ontario, they don't qualify for red green. Right, <laughs> it's too populated. Anything above Huntsville, though. <laughs> and, and then across, like inclu- obviously including Sault Ste. Marie and up, is red green so, territory. For the Americans watching, the red green show is amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think it's shown every once in a while. If you get on PBS late at night, you can watch it. Uh, and it's a fantastic show that I grew up watching because we, you know we we got CBC on. You know we had all the Canadian channels as well as all the American channels. Nice. Yeah. It was sweet, but yeah, I, I think my favorite thing is something I like to live by. You know, if she doesn't find you handsome, you know, she better find you handy. <laughs> and <laughs> so make sure you can do something, because you might not be able to do something up here. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched. Uh, I remember when I was in high school. I think I used for a year. I watched that each day before going to school because I always got up very early in high school. Um, yeah, I believe in high school it was on like very early in the morning. Right. Would you get up and watch it? 
Yeah, like I, I like I, I was obsessive in high school of getting up very early and like starting my day with exercise and all that kind of stuff. But like, um, <laughs> I was basically torturing myself by getting up at five a.m. every day. Good for you. Not saying healthy or fit, just torturing yourself. Yeah, torturing. Just, like, uh, you know, I could be doing this just to feel good. No, self legion Yeah, pretty well like that. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of times, like I, 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 I uh, like just can't take doing something anymore. It's because I got obsessed with doing it. I might have liked it at one point, and that's why I did it obsessively. But then I start to not like it. But then I want to still do it to the same extent because I feel like it, I, I, it's like, whoa! Look at how awesome this is. I'm doing this better than anyone else. And then it's like, but I can't take it anymore. And then I'm like, I can't take it. To, I'm never going to do this again. And to be, uh, he's going insane right now. Uh, he's going after the biology textbook. Do it. Go, Tibby. Consume that science, Tibby. I approve. Yeah, you would, wouldn't you? I would. You would I'm a approve. science nerd. I like science. I'm more into magic, though. Oh, okay. No. I, I like space unicorns as well. <laughs> I like unicorns. So you're an astronomer, Scott? So, yeah, I do outreach. So I do the Virtual Star Party, which is a show on Google+, Plus where we connect uh, telescopes to their cameras. We do a live show. We used to do it every Sunday. Now we're, we've gone to monthly, which I'm trying to rent back up. But we've been doing that since, gosh, February of 2012. Virtual Star Party? Is that what yes. you said? That's Virtual cool. Star Party. Yeah. My son would totally dig that. It's so much fun. And then I also do outreach with the Hubble Space Telescope. So we have weekly shows as well where we connect the uh, the different scientists that are using the Hubble Space Telescope and we're explaining what's going on and any new press releases and stuff like that. And so we do a lot of outreach on Google+. Plus. I've really pushed for us to have a big presence there. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun um, being a part of something that inspired me as a young child, the Hubble Space Telescope, and now I get to help tell its story, and that makes me extremely excited. Awesome. And, and yeah, that, and I've done all sorts of other YouTube stuff and collaborations, and and now I get into photography as well, so I feel like I'm, I'm like, the poser in this group. And it's kind of cool. You know, I'm like, I like photography because I got into it via videography for shooting videos. But I found it's very therapeutic for me. As You know, we're talking about mental illness and anxiety. That it's very therapeutic for me to go out and go on a, on a photo walk and try to be present in that moment and, and, and find something. So uh, it's some of it's awful, but hey, it's my awful. Thank you very much. Oh and... no, don't say it's awful. If you like it, it's your thing. Right. What did and you then... say that um, you were doing star photography with your with a camera attached to telescope? Yeah. So that's how we we do. Um, we have live shows where we have live feeds, and then we have them where okay, they're so doing CCD. Right. And okay. then recently we've switched format up to allowing for astrophotography. So, because, you know, the clouds can't stay away from anybody's, you know, point of view right. ever. Because we're having to cancel shows all the time because of our live views would get clouded out. And yeah. so we're we're allowing our, like, like two weeks window of astrophotography that they have done. So long, uh, long exposure astrophotography that's been processed and bringing that in. I am I am not good at astrophotography. I like doing. Oh, I was going to ask you to share some. <laughs> um, I can share you some pr processed images of Hubble that I've done, but that'd be cool uh, too. Yeah. But here, let me see. Actually, I just released some today on my latest adventure up at Mount Wilson Observatory. So let me pull up my profile. Cause I put them up on the Google Plus. Here we go. Screen share. So this is the historic 60-inch telescope on top of the Mount Wilson Observatory, uh, right outside of Pasadena, California. And it's over 100 years old, and we were up there last Sunday. So we had this, uh, this great birthday party that I was privileged to be able to join up with. And... It was great being able to observe with something that... You know, this is the birthplace of astrophysics as we know it. This is 
where our modern understanding of astronomy has come from was at this location using this telescope. So it was really awesome uh, being able to be a part of that. Uh, let's see some of my other shots. There's Alessandra. There's me and my putt. <laughs> the moon! I see the moon! It's my butt. <laughs> let's, let's get away from my butt. So here's uh, one. I actually was able to capture them slewing and moving the dome at the same time. And th The supermoon was happening. So this is yeah. all the viewers just wondering. from the moon itself. Um, this is a 15-second exposure. So she stood very, very, very still for me yeah. while I got that. I was very happy with how it came out. And that is light pollution oh. from Los Angeles. Wow. Yes. As horrible as light pollution is, that's gorgeous. Yeah, it's Thank pretty. You. Thank you. Yeah, that's nice. And there's another angle. Oh, I like this is my favorite one so far. So really showing how it, it just reflects a lot here in the clouds and really brings it back down to you. Yeah, I love the scope of that one, that you've Thank got you. that long composition there, and you can see the clouds at the top with all that negative space in the middle. It's really cool. Thank you. And there's those same clouds, but uh, brought it a little bit further. And another long exposure. And the clouds moved in very quickly. Uh, it clouded over really quickly, and so I was able to actually get some of the stars coming out as the showing some of the movement of the clouds. Yeah. Another one of the domes and a lot of the light pollution reflecting back from the clouds. Gotta love that light pollution. Yay, light pollution. I hear, I hear about it all the time. <laughs> and this is where the clouds are not impressed with your supermoon at all. Oh and God. there's me despondent about the clouds. So I'm in the dome now. And, <laughs> and there's a telescope looking up through the dome, and I'm not happy. But this is not by I me. Mean, this is uh, also undertaking that image, so... So this is like me trying to get into photography, and I'm I'm liking cool. it. It makes me feel creative in the ways where I'm I'm getting burnt out on certain modes of creativity, and so I'm right. finding better you know ways to channel it. Those are some neat images. This is definitely cool what you've been doing. Thank you. Thank Rachel's screen sharing. Well, yeah, I am not an expert or anything. This is just from what I've already shared in Google Plus oh, wow. because this oh, is my. Right. This isn't my main computer that I'm on, but this one, that's of the Milky Way over my house, and that big, that big, you know, blob is light pollution, of course. And then yeah. there's, uh, this is in a different, different area. There's a couple power lines if you look real close. I don't mm -hmm. have a huge collection because I'm, I'm kind of picky about um, what you know passes. Like this one's so so, but you know, what can you do? No, it's um, great. So and now that I know this, Rachel, this one, guess who's is... joining the virtual star party every <laughs> once in a while? This is, I think, the best one I've taken. It's the Swan, the Swan yeah. Nebula. And this one was a lot of fun. And it's a lot of it is like a post-processing art. Right. Like you think, yeah. you know, photographs is one thing, and then you get into this whole other world of complex, complex calculations and different just to bring out, you know, how, how you want it to be, and then you got all the environmental conditions that you have to contend with. It's not an easy thing. I really give give a hand to to my boyfriend, Mike, to, to do as well as he does, because it's pretty awesome. Yeah. So I just want to show those off real quick. No, you're signed up. I will see you next episode. <laughs> I took a picture of my dog once. Let's see it. Let's see it. I don't know how to screen. I don't know how to screen. Was it a selfie? With an iPad, though. It was with an iPad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I mean, come on. Well, I've done some star photography, but I've never done uh, anything with a telescope. So that's neat. That's something I still haven't had a chance to experience. It's yeah, because it's essentially just a, a very big lens, and you you do have to. Yeah. Well, I mean, depending on how you're doing it too, uh, if you're using mirrors or if you are using uh, a refracting telescope. But yeah, it works a lot the same way. And I think my favorite image I took. So this is a Hubble image that I processed and turned into art. So it's not scientifically accurate, but. I still love it, so I, I threw in a lot of, of, of filters and effects through Photoshop, but screen share. This is my favorite, most recent one that I've done. 
Oh, nice. Oh, that is nice. Oh, that's very Ooh. nice. That's cool. Yeah, that's badass. So this is a, a, a completely different galaxy outside of our own. And uh, this is the, and yeah, it's just, and this is Hubble data. So this is something that Hubble has seen. I use the, the, same, the same Hubble palette that, that they use as well. So you can actually find a very similar image to this on hubblesite.org where they process this. And I, I played around with it to make it a little bit more, I don't know, yeah, I love bringing out the textures here and really making it almost seem like we're underwater. I, it was what I was really looking for, and almost like it was coral. That doesn't look unlike really close-up pictures of like, um, you know, like blood and stuff. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's weird. It's weird how close it's that on is. On an eyeball or something. Considering right. that that's a galaxy, mm -hmm. how close that looks to like tissue. I, I don't know. How do you say right. that? Right. That's crazy cool. Thank you. So this is my this is my jewel of processing images. There's for sure aliens in that galaxy, eh? For sure, I think so. I think Have they're. Have you ever gotten into that whole the the Fitz the Fitz image files and the whole oh, Fitz liberator? Fitz liberator the Fitz liberator is a a godsend, but also it's such a pain. Uh, it is. It is. I've tried to do it, and I got. I was. It was like learning curve was like this. I was like, I don't have like three months to learn this. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's something I'm planning on doing. Actually, I was. T I've been talking with our team. They're at Johns Hopkins. And working with the uh, Zolt LeVay, who is the main um, image processor for all the Hubble images that you see, all the, the artwork and posters and everything like mm -hmm. that, he's the one that goes through and processes those images. And so we're going to try and to develop a show to show how people access all the archive, because it's completely open to everybody. Everyone yeah, has it's access all to out there. all it's just, data. It kind of like needs to be streamlined for like the everyday person and not have to spend a week just to try to find the resources. Right. If and I'm it comes in this in obscure myself. FITS file, which you can convert to a TIFF, which then you can play with. And once you get in there, then you need to learn, like, hey, there's cosmic rays in a lot of these. because It's space. And there's crazy stuff happening all the time. So you have to correct for a lot of those and... You, uh, and know that you're going to have to stitch a lot of these images together to get a full composite for what's going on. So, yeah, we hope to sh bring more of the art aspect of what goes on with what the world sees when when Hubble uh, releases an image, which we're coming up on our 25th anniversary in April. Yay! Yay! 25 years of Hubble. Woo. Happy Hubble. Happy Hubble, t uh, happy Hubble birthday. Woo-hoo! Well, I have a, I'll share one of my star photos. Yeah. It's not a uh, straight up. It's a composite of three different images. So this is definitely what you would consider fine art rather than kind of realistic what you see all at one time. But um, so oh, nice. Here, nice. I had a uh, the image with the clouds and the moon, the image with the stars. And then the image with the mountain. Those are all separate images, so mm -hmm. I blended those together. They all blend together very well. They look like they could all be totally in the same scene, so you did a great job on that. It would be awesome to see a scene like that all at once, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, the other thing that I, I personally think is impressive about the image is that while all three of these images were um, camera images, I actually took them into my phone and used an app to create the composite, so really, there's fairly powerful mobile editing going on nowadays. Yeah. I was impressed at like the amount of masking I could do with the phone. Usually, this is something I would try to do in Photoshop on my computer. So, I think that's that's a fun fact to me personally. That it's oh, totally, that's great. I mean, like you know, we have so many time constraints on ourselves now. Yeah. That it's nice that if you do have something like that you want to work on, you can totally work on it on your phone or other device, and you don't have to sit like chained to your desktop. I think it's great. And uh, what app did you use to do that? If you don't mind sharing. What app is that? It's called Image Blender. Image Blender. And it it's got really great masking capabilities. You can create composites in it really nicely. Very cool. I'll have to look into that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I think you, you're right too about streamlining. So you know, I, that's why I'm loving Adobe's Creative Cloud. So I can have most of everything here on my main workstation, but I have everything else on my laptop. Everything connected through mobile. So if I need to get it on there and I can play around with it, I'm like, why didn't they do this sooner? I yeah. love Creative Cloud. This yeah. helps so much. That's nice too. I've I actually finally made the leap to CC this year, too, and I really like the idea of being able yeah. to do my Lightroom stuff, because I use Lightroom a whole yeah, me too. lot. And so Light the introduction of Lightroom Mobile is really cool. Oh, for sure. Lightroom Mobile is amazing, the way that goes with it. I, I love Lightroom Mobile. Guys, so can this, I share, can this I share a picture? This is not by Adobe in any way, shape, mm -hmm. or form. <laughs> but you can pay Billy, Adobe. You can <laughs> give him a sponsorship. Sponsorship. Yeah. Do you have a picture, Denny? Yeah, I found a toad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally going to follow you on Instagram. Oh, is in that picture. So this is yeah. like a, a picture of the toad and your dog. So. Yeah, I literally, it was a big toad too. I was very proud of that because I slapped on um, an Instagram uh, filter and it just came out real good, I thought, you know. like It's a great image. I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. a lot of fun. I love toads and I love dogs, so there's nothing to not like in this picture. I am not a photographer, just so you know. Well, I just hearted it on Instagram. <laughs> yes! Right I love now. Instagram. Instagram's like my favorite, for sure. Jeez, now I'm going to have to follow you, too. Yeah, follow me. Like, yeah, dude. Shame. Everyone do it. <laughs> okay, so drop your handle in the chat so we can call everybody can follow you. <laughs> Everyone. Who what? Instagram and Twitters and everything else. All the things. Boom. Follow. So on Instagram, I'm real Scott Lewis. As opposed to those fake Scott Lewis's out there, they're all fans. That there is a new uh, showcase app here, and I think that I I, I don't know. Like I just saw it. it. Like, do you guys see it? Yeah. On the left, like, so you could put a link in there. Like, does anyone want to try that out and put a link in there? I don't oh, think I can. I think you can. I can. Yeah, I can't. Okay. So there's no feature items um, here. I'll check back again later. So wait. Uh, wait uh, I'm trying to copy it. Why Here. can't I copy it in the... For some reason, I can't copy the chat. Oh, there we go. Wait, that, that's Lotus's link. I'll just try Lotus's yeah, link. Yeah, I win! <laughs> go, Lotus! Okay. I dropped the whole link in there, though, so he was able to click the link. Um, okay. Uh, saved uh, items now visible to your audience. Oh, wait. Show item? I have to click show item? I, I think... Maybe. I don't know if that works. I've not read any of the notes on this I new feature. When we did this, we just did a show on Wednesday, and I saw that 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 was a new app, but we didn't play with it at all. So I'm really curious. Yeah, yeah, I, I have no clue about. It. Uh, like I just saw it when I started up this hangout because uh, I, I haven't uh, done a hangout there in a month because I've been just doing the monthly lately. And it, right now it is about time to get to our uh, musical guest, Danny. So we'll end uh, the show uh, over to you. And uh, okay. Um, and uh, I believe that people can find your music over on denny.ta.com, and I believe that is likely on your lower third. Well, your name is there, so that's yeah. how you uh, spell it. And uh, just remember to put it in studio mode, and I don't have the uh, the app that hides people in the, in this Hangout, so uh, everyone oh. just remember to mute when, when, when Denny, Denny's play, playing, and uh, remember to unmute for when you clap, because then you, know, you don't have silent clapping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to see you guys. Don't hide. You ready for me? Billy's even muted. Look yep. at that. Kick it. Kick it, yo. So, you don't have to try and spell my last name. I actually got Denny.me. Because people would ask me, like, how do I get to your website? Like, DennyGoche.com. And they go, like, blank. Look, and their eyes go, like, two different directions. And they're like, um... Because no one can spell Goche, so give me a break. So it's D-E-N-I.me. That's fine. This one's called Into the West. The star here, where it all begins, where the 
air seems to No for sure Get the cool rain winds Just like it's always been I think I'll go away Go away and find Up and chase you to the west. Do whatever's best for me and you are so too. Sleep up high in the crow's nest. Back the past to my knees. This one lane road will send me back to where I came. Not quite changed, but not the same. Up and chase it into the west. Do whatever's best for me, and you are a song too. Sleep up high in the close nest. Oh, tired of. to empty That was really good. Thanks, man. I, it's seriously going to buy your album if they're all like that. That's <laughs> freaking awesome. That's is totally my, my thing. Right on. That's the new album. I just released that May 1st, and I've got vinyl. I, I did a run of vinyl. What? Yeah, I'm selling a ton of vinyl. Um, it's, it's really cool. Like, That's rad. Yeah, we live in this new world where musicians get to um, uh, record what they want and you know a appeal to the, the audience that that loves them the most and develop a little following. I do it full time. I play uh, play music all over the place and that's what I do. So yeah. No, I love it. Very good yeah. job. Thanks, man. That was the first single off my new album. Actually, go on YouTube and watch the video. We did a stop motion video, my wife and I, and it's like this family that travels from like the city into the woods and uh, they end up sleeping in a tree and he, and he fights this shark and it's it's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. And then, and then the waves get really big, and so like he takes the anchor off the boat, and he like whips it around, and he and he, and he pulls an air balloon out of the sky, and then they float away in their boat into the sky, and all these stars appear. You'd be into that sky. That's amazing. Stars. Yeah, you That's need really to drop cool. the link. You need to drop the link to that so we. Can yes, watch. for sure. Yeah. yeah, I'll for sure drop it. I'll make sure you guys see it before before we go. Um, cool. But I wrote that song, you know, camping. Not quite wilderness, but camping with my kids. I have four kids and, and a lovely wife and obviously Tucker. And uh, that was about just wishing that I could just leave it all behind and just sell all my possessions and, and live a very simplistic lifestyle, just playing music for people and, and harvesting food off the land. And, and how wouldn't that be? Doesn't that sound so romantic and awesome? It does. I can totally right. agree that. Yeah. So that's what that song's about. Um, this next song, I usually play it on my electric. Um, I'm going to play it for you. It's called Why Don't You Call Home? And 
And I remember when I was dating my wife, Angie, she's such a cutie, like big brown eyes, like Portuguese, olive skin. She's so beautiful. And I remember being like a white ginger dude, you know, thinking like I, I'm way out of my league here, you know, walking downtown Toronto thinking, I, we have to, um, I have to tell her that I think that I might be an artist, like, and that it might be in my blood. And I don't know if I can avoid that. I don't know if I can handle a job. <laughs> and I told her, you know, I might, um, I may have to be an artist and it's okay if you have to call home and, and, and leave me. This is why don't you call home. The day we went walking downtown together Through the rain and the sleet and the snow How on earth was I supposed to know That you were a ghost and my heart still blue Point of view, but like that hole in your view. So I said, Why don't you call on? Why don't you call on? On a whole lake in the May of December. I could talk with an old mama Hold it too tight to make it save me all Come home. I'll okay. be right over. All right. I miss Canada anyway. Have you been to Canada? Yeah, I, I grew up. So I grew up in a small town called Lapeer and spent a lot of time in Port Huron. So we'd always just go to Sarnia like all the time. We just walked the bridge, and nice. so yeah, I spent a lot of time just going back and forth to Canada. Toronto is an awesome town. Toronto is awesome. Um, I, I play the States quite often. I head down to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, quite often, and. Uh, there's a few towns I've been to Sioux Falls. You know, like I've been through the states playing gigs, um, but Lancaster I tend to go back about once a year, and I, I just really love it there, Pennsylvania. Um, a friend of mine is encouraging me to, to consider, you know, getting a green card and like living down there for half a year. It is so easy to play gigs. Like when I go down there, like the gigs like jump out of everywhere, and I could play down there forever. But in yeah. Canada, population-wise, we just you know. We all fit in New York City, basically, right? <laughs> With a lot of space in between our, the cities, so, yeah. Well, if you're ever in L.A., let me know. Yeah, I definitely would love to get back to L.A. Um, this one's called You and I. You know, every, every now and then, you know, I write a song that I don't really understand, and this is sort of one of those songs that I don't quite get. Um, the more I sing it, though, the more I actually kind of end up relating to it. Here it goes. The dreams they come and go Decent rays of hopelessness that I can't show I've been told that these are times when we hope Holding hands 
lambs to the badlands and last frontier. have time for another song do we uh i think it is about time to end the show i, I, I think i talked i talked so much yeah. between the songs uh, <laughs> and i'd like to thank all of you for joining and for everyone else for watching and i also want to thank the person who just pledged ten dollars on patreon Yay. <laughs> uh, Yay. And, excellent yes um and uh uh, uh, you can keep up with me and all the other kind of stuff that I do, you know, just by simply follow, follow me on uh, Google Plus. That's where most of my content will end up, and also, of course, on YouTube. That's where the video content will end up. Um, I'm I'm not at the current moment uh, posting too much video content, but that may change depending on what that goes on. Um, and uh, if you'd like to help support me and my family projects and Tibby and all that, and you know uh, help me be able to live literally, uh, you can uh, support help support me over on Patreon.com/slash Billy Wilson, and uh, and and also through Patreon, that's where I also uh, post my weekly content selections there, and I, I also post them onto uh, Google Plus, so it, you know you can go over from Google Plus to Patreon to you know see what the kinds of work I've been working on each week, and uh, you can help you know, support that content uh, by pledging. And it, it really helps because, you know, it's like I'm actually able to, uh, you know, ensure that I have a place to live by <laughs> that kind of support. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining and being part. And uh, we'll, we'll see you. Thank you, Billy.